so I do a little bit pressure because between you and uh, the social evening, it's just me with 20 minutes uh, talking about uh, teaching that the topic is. So today I will talk about open source, the uh, importance of open source and teaching JS uh, in Vilnius University, and as well the importance of open source in one vendor JS world we live here in Baltics. Uh, so, uh, this one, yeah. Uh, so before presentation, I was thinking about how to call the situation or program uh, where you have the program that is uh, actively used and most popular for many years. I really like the term mainstream because it's uh, mo it's, uh, it's like most popular, it's most used, most discussed. Uh, and uh, why this mainstream proprietary uh, JS software is not uh, enough for today's world? Uh, why not? Why it's not longer enough to have only these skills? Uh, because it's most popular. Why it's uh, not enough? So uh, yeah, as JS expands significantly, and uh, yeah, you here uh, understands about this. Uh, I think very well. But uh, so job requirements are now often go beyond one software uh, functionality, and actually, profession GIS professionals should go also beyond the one software interface and possibilities it gives for them. The things like customization and uh, innovation and accessibility, things like uh, interoperability, open data, integration between GIS and non-GIS software open standards and least, the last but not least the possibility to maintain the GIS software by themselves. Not necessarily very technical, but to understand the GIS from the database to the end user, like end user in the web or end user at the desktop. Uh, and uh, also the one of the right now also one of the most important things is cost effective way to implement JS, especially when JS comes to more fields that uh, JS are not usually used before. So, uh, you have just finished JS bachelor's and uh, you're shiny new specialist and you're thinking about that you are becoming really nice geospatial intelligent architect. Actually, I really, uh, I'm always uh, looking for inspiration from LinkedIn how they can actually make uh, so complicated sounds uh, uh, <laughs> the job uh, naming uh, uh, when you just can have a uh, JS specialist. But okay, you are thinking that you are becoming like geospatial intelligent architect, let's call it. And you are thinking about that university, uh, in university also using really shiny tools, you are building dashboards, you are building very cool storytelling maps, you are working with the data, so everything is smooth and you think, okay, I'm just quite, it's an interesting job. I, have, if I, I really can become this uh, architect or, or, or analytics or, or spatial intelligence, whatever. Yeah? And you will create like new brand software uh, and solutions for huge companies uh, uh, and so on. But uh, in reality, <laughs> yeah, the uh, reality always is harsh. And uh, if you are really thinking about a professional GIS specialist, you are thinking not only about uh, the uh, skills uh, that requires pushing the buttons. Uh, you are thinking about the skills that requires understanding how all GIS software works. Not all the software, but how GIS as a system works. And how data comes to the desktop, how data comes to the web, how web works, where is the bottlenecks, and so on. And here's a few things, actually, this is my uh, one week uh, tasks uh, from my work, and you see that there's no typical, uh, actually, tasks that you're teaching or learning in universities. There are a lot of tasks that are related with connection between JS and non-JS software, there are tasks that are related with some automatization that, that are based on databases. And I really like that uh, before presentation that it was told that all the logic and all the uh, 
the power is laid down on the post drive and uh, when we are talking about mainstream GIS, uh, the database is a tricky part because you don't know actually what is happening in database because you are using tools and you are not dealing with the stuff, GIS stuff inside the database. But when you have a huge projects, big projects with the real time data, really big uh, data uh, inputs and outputs, you actually should go to the database. So, uh, and uh, how it becomes that the mainstream JS, uh, how it happens that the JS and Baltics actually have this mainstream software. Uh, of course, I will not go to like 20 or 25 years uh, of the history, but this is one just uh, uh, episode. Uh, so, one of the standard list of conference speakers of uh, annual uh, conventional software uh, uh, conference, really big conference, and really nice conference actually. I was participated, and really like it. But I think this similar list can be also found in the Latvian and Estonian. So, and you see, it's the Center for Register, State Data Agency, Agriculture Data Center, Lidgrid, Tartu City, you know, it was, <laughs> yeah, the Toynian Post, Vilnius Plan. So, what, what connects these presenters? How do you feel? Public money. <laughs> it's all these uh, presenters are from public sectors, of course. And, uh, you know, when you're a young student and you see that all the public sectors uh, are using software and they explain them in big conferences and so on, you're thinking, yeah, I should go for this software and it's uh, yeah, because uh, the job market will be filled by the CVs, uh, by the requirements uh, to just use this conventional uh, software and also for teachers, we, because I'm also a lecturer in Vilnius University, I also want to teach uh, the students to have skills to, and find the job. But, uh, so, yeah, let's go. To, uh, by the way, uh, as I mentioned, the conference was very interesting, but, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, public sector. Uh, so, so, let's, if we just give up and say, let's teach so mainstream JS, what could be, what, <laughs> what can be possible go wrong? Yeah, because if it's, popular if you have a lot of uh, job uh, uh, vacancies, uh, if it's uh, used to walk in the whole world, why we can only, why it's not a very good idea to just teach uh, the conventional software in the universities? And uh, yeah, and uh, here's the problem. Uh, one day you will meet this guy from, uh, from business and you will tell that I don't care actually about these shiny schools and so on. I just have a problem. My application is map. I need map. I need the database. I need scaled uh, so solution that could scale, be cost effective, and so on. I don't need these other tools because I have a problem, very real, clear problem. I want to solve, and. Uh, and there's a tricky part because uh, uh, if you only know this really, as I mentioned, shiny great tools for, for creating uh, customization JS, but actually you are asked for a solution that could just scale, for example, enormously. Yeah? Uh, so what can be wrong that we can actually end up with the students or specialists that actually are, uh, I call it, I don't know, it's good, uh, <laughs> you, uh, this uh, term or not, but I call it a button clicker. Uh, so uh, we can end up with having the specialists that are actually are button clickers. And it's not very bad because uh, there are a market for them also because we have the uh, GS making support, for example, data uh, collection and so on. So it's okay. You can be a button clicker, then you can be a really good specialist at that. But uh, from university, I want to expect more like problem solver. No? And as I mentioned, it's okay to be a button clicker, but as a university, uh, if you end up with the GIS uh, bachelor degree, you should understand GIS as a system, not as a software. Yeah. It's a system. It's also person is in the system also, not only like a program. And uh, uh, 
When I started uh, teaching the open source JS about four years ago, there was a lot of skepticism about that because, yeah, a few slides before that, uh, if nobody uses it, so why are you teaching? <laughs> and uh, what is interesting, two years uh, right now, about two years, we had in Lithuania like a little bit uh, shaking situation uh, because. Uh, the, there are also new projects in the governmental sector that are used open source, and there is a lot of open source. And this is the few uh, examples of the projects that are working on also. So we have biodiversity informational platforms, platform because we are changing old systems with the new ones uh, and uh, all commercial software with the new ones. So commercial software are meaning not only GIS commercial software, but document managers, the system, Oracle. <laughs> it's, uh, I think we just uh, on, dropped about six Oracle databases already, so yeah, just fall out. <laughs> and we use just Postgres uh, because there are no need for Oracle. Uh, so, uh, and uh, for all this biodiversity informational system, we use uh, like Postgres and PostGIS, and actually all automatization, all preparation of data is uh, based on the database. And we are, for publishing, we are using QGIS server. And for map solution, we are using OpenLayer UGS framework. And uh, what I was also really uh, uh, happy with, the, with that QGIS server uh, had really uh, nice custom filters for uh, using WMS or WFS as uh, APIs uh, for front end. And when I see this list, I, <laughs> I understand that our students are uh, not fitting in this. Because they are not, they are a little bit familiar with QGIS and so on. So, but they are part of the in JS. So I'm just expecting that they will understand, not necessarily program with those QGIS or open data, but just know that there are two ways, not only one way. Uh, and this, uh, and the, well, one of the business uh, uh, application example. Uh, it's actually it's a really interesting uh, system, smart bus management system. It's a private uh, system uh, built by a Lithuanian company. And what is interesting that all the logic of real-time data, uh, real-time data is flowing from five to one thousand buses and trolley buses uh, into the database uh, from G GPS receivers. And uh, all the, this uh, data processing and publishing actually is made on the uh, PostJS and Postgre, actually we don't have any JS up. And let's imagine that you always think that if data is coming to web JS, to web, you should have a web server, and not web server, but a JS server. Uh, so how it happens? It happens when you're thinking not from the perspective of the button clicker, but when you just have a problem and you just want to solve it. So we don't need uh, any uh, JS error. Actually, we use PostGIS functions to provide uh, GeoJSONs to backend APIs, and it works very well. <laughs> Actually, it's, I'm really happy with that. And we use vector tiles for base map and Amplibre with uh, UGS uh, the front end uh, on the map. So it's not very complicated map. You know, just showing the data and the real life. Uh, uh, tracking with uh, bus stop bus stops and so on, and uh, also the, 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 the length of the, with, with PostJS we're also tracking uh, where the bus is, uh, the history of the bus traffic and so on, so it's really a complicated part in PostJS and PostGRS well. And it's completely JS system, but uh, uh, obviously that uh, there are not a lot of uh, students who can understand this, and uh, not even, I don't want to say that program this uh, system, but to understand that there is such architecture of using uh, tools, JS tools like that. So, uh, and uh, yeah, when I started thinking about teaching the open source JS, I was thinking about how this process should look. If I want to teach the whole steps of JS, and I suddenly have only half a year, so I'm just thinking about, okay, if GIS is a system, so students should create the system by their own. So what I mean by their own, that they should go all the these main components and they must be familiar with that. 
they should understand how spatial data works, how to even install it on their own computers and try it, how desktop JS works, how desktop JS can be connected with uh, databases, with web services, with APIs and so on, with mobile JS, web systems. Uh, so, and I prepared this uh, uh, course for open source JS and using open source JS, and I will do it quick, but I see that I have four minutes, uh, so I will teach uh, you how I teach uh, students. So basically we start with the open source software and how it works, because there's the, there I, I feel the gap in the knowledge of the students that when they come to university and they uh, has access to free uh, commercial, so to access free access to commercial software, after the university, they don't actually they don't understand that you should pay for that uh, if you just want to suggest someone with this solution. Because uh, already I have dissertation with the students that they come to our companies and uh, when they was asked to build something for them and they just suggest to so there is a software for that. But companies they want they don't expect that uh, it will cost so much because we have specialists so if you're specialist why we need the software and everything done for you so <laughs> and I'm always teaching them that uh, if you can if you everything you can done with the clicks of the button so you don't need to be a specialist you can just look at the YouTube or or, or, or read the papers and uh, usually there are a lot of public information on how to do this and uh, and uh, guys from India will do even better if you just uh, specialize in this part yeah, then we're teaching about the post.js and postgres and actually I have always seen that there's a so huge uh, knowledge gap in the understanding of databases especially when talking about triggers, views uh, spatial joints and so on uh, in the database part because uh, when, I, when I try to understand how also students understand the JS and I for example if you just put the point on the map how you will calculate uh, automatically uh, some data from other layers but immediately not after the running the button not after when you find the button yeah, here but uh, how, how you will create this automatically, how, it, how you understand that this would work. Uh, and uh, usually they are thinking about, okay, schedule tasks, uh, Python script, and so on, but it's so simple, yeah, when you're thinking from the perspective of the database, because it's just trigger with some intersect selection, so it's five minutes and you're done. Okay, one day and you're done for students. Uh, yeah, and QGIS and uh, Kufeld, uh, as I mentioned before, actually, uh, I have a lot of projects when I need to, to prepare QGIS projects for different companies, and it's usually more, it's usually it's easier to uh, teach uh, uh, specialists or teach the personal uh, who's never used GIS at all with using QGIS. Uh, um, because if you have some familiar with other JS tools, it's curious, it always seems like a little bit not so shiny, not so, it's a little bit uh, differently works, and you have different menu buttons. And then I try to explain that. You see, there's a tricky part of the button clicker. You're just familiar with the one layout. You should go away from the layout. You should think about how I will implement for example, in, in intersect, and how this intersect work? Maybe I can do this intersect in the database, uh, and so on. So it's or maybe I can create view, which are uh, doing here intersect uh, of the, uh, on the fly. So it's probably the best solution or <coughs> better solution, so on. So and uh, publishing uh, data using Google Server and uh, different types of e-services. So it's yeah. So I will also add the program. Maybe someone is also uh, want to teach uh, in your universities or, or something to them. with the uh, open source tool. You can use my material and share your thoughts. So it would be really nice feedback from you also. And what we're creating usually they, they have uh, one task. Uh, so it's uh, you should create JS for enterprise that manage infrastructure or something like that. 
uh, and their price information system totally its own workflow. And they actually, and they, at the end of the course, they should present this system for me. And as I, I always say that I, as a buyer, will buy your uh, solution. And uh, if it's very good, so you will uh, give like ten. Uh, uh, you will get the ten uh, uh, scores. So it's and uh, yeah, we have uh, this five also uh, subtasks and always. And I also also suggest for you also always begin with the system refinement analysis. It could be short, but just think twice or, or more before starting building something. And just take a pause, take a, take a day or two for thinking about what you are creating. Not think when you're creating, <laughs> or, or the thinking should before uh, uh, you are start dealing with the uh, uh, patterns or something like that. Okay? So, thank you. <laughs> thank you, uh, Andres. And uh, before we go to questions, because I know as soon as the questions and then you guys run off, I'm gonna do some housekeeping rules. Uh, after this session, there's gonna be a photograph taken, right? At uh, 10, well, right after this session, uh, as soon as we finish. And everybody should go to outside uh, of the building. No. No? Oh, to the big stairs. Main uh, auditorium. No, the, no, in the... The main stairs, the big stairs, <laughs> where you go upstairs. Okay, that's the place to go. Just follow somebody. Hopefully there will be people there. Yes. And uh, and after that, of course, the social event is happening at the Cider House. Yeah, you know, the address is on, you know, everywhere. But make sure to bring your uh, badge. Here's my badge. Okay, it's there. <laughs> uh, because that's going to be a ticket in uh, from 6.30 to 7, kind of would be a good time to arrive. And uh, yeah, how long is the party going to last? Um, when we end it. Last guess. <laughs> last guess. Last guess, please. So when the tomorrow's program starts at uh, 9. OK, so it'll end at 9 in the morning. But now we go to questions uh, for others, now that we got the uh, housekeeping things out of the way. Let's see if we have uh, questions. Okay. Oh, we have one in the audience, please. Go ahead, ask for the audience. I can do without a mic, that's okay. So uh, you mentioned the conference giving this uh, almost monopoly impression of people and then this show giving impression that nothing else exists almost. Yeah. That's how I perceive it. Um, do you think some smaller events, more frequent events like rather informal meetups, either at national or even at the world level, could it help to demonstrate the viability and popularity of open solutions? Yeah, actually, we've organized, uh, we call it Hackathon. Uh, if anyone wants to see how it looks, uh, so it's a really big conference we had uh, last year, and we, it's an annual conference. It's not only, not meant it's to present only open source GIS uh, solutions, but uh, uh, about GIS in general, and as well but about open source. So we have this conference, and actually it feels really, uh, the feeling is really good because we uh, last year we had like more than 200 participants. So it, uh, as a national level conference, it's really, because it's really a uh, very narrow <laughs> field. Uh, and, uh, but what I really uh, think about that uh, is, uh, QK's days could be also be interesting uh, uh, at more QK's uh, monthly meetups or something like that should be also uh, interesting for the not even students because uh, uh, I think also about the lecturers and the teachers because in the Lithuania, I don't know how in Latvia and Estia, uh, the next year will be introduced in the teaching program GAS uh, in the school. So the teachers should uh, show something in GIS. So we are already also preparing some materials for them because they are a little bit in uh, at shock for, for them because a lot of uh, teachers are not uh, uh, in the best shape for, <laughs> for understanding GIS and not uh, also they have like the, the, they don't have the skills for using this IT stuff because they understand that GIS is IT and so yeah, also thinking about JSSID. So. 
So, uh, so let's please stop me because I can. Let's go through the questions <laughs> quickly. Uh, first, uh, most popular comment, of course, is you are singing opportunity of big companies to sell elementary things as innovation, and it's wonderful. Not really a question, a good com comment. Uh, but this is a good question. After four years teaching open source software, do you see also a change in the work market? Is there more demand for specialists who are problem solvers? Uh, yes, actually, I already see in the descriptions that uh, there is also welcome knowledge uh, about open source JS and QGIS. Also, I see positive changes in the tenders, uh, but this is really important, I think, also. Uh, but actually, what is really uh, where I see the changes that I showed you before that. We already have the national informational system who is working on open source, so we can always uh, show this as an example because each time we see that uh, usually person who wants who is thinking about uh, maybe switching, maybe not, is always asking, "Can you show me a real life example?" And when you have now like ten real life examples, you can say, "Yeah, just." Look at this, and it works, and it works very well, and it looks nice, and it's not so, how to say, a uh, very complicated system, and so on. So it's, uh, yeah, I see a lot of changes, but uh, some of these changes is related with me. Some of them just naturally goes on because you know, the money from the US it's not uh, endless. It's, uh, there are a lot of companies thinking about how to spend less on. Here's another good question. Do your students complain that you teach them GIS nobody wants and that hinders their yes. futures as art is yes, specialists? It, it, a lot of my students really hate uh, postures and uh, postgres <laughs> You're not the most popular teacher in the world? I don't know. I, I think uh, for half of students uh, can be popular and for half the most hated the teacher because I really want that they understand that intersect is not a tool. Intersect is a function or method to intersect data. This is not a button. And then, and they are also telling me that oh, why the hell is matter? I, I will work with this software. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, some good comments here as well. Uh, I want to attend your class. How can I hire your students? Yeah. So uh, just a uh, few seconds. So today you probably heard Gustav's presentation about uh, InfraPlex. So he is my student. So I think that this uh, teaching of open source JS paid off. <laughs> yeah. So it's yes. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. But you can hire them. They will break their own companies. They're good entrepreneurs, which is even better to get new solutions. So we're slowly running out of time, but let's see if we have. Uh, have you observed new enthusiasms coming along with open source solutions? Yeah, especially uh, in uh, EO, uh, Earth Observation Mathematics, uh, because QGIS has a really nice tools uh, already implemented as a plugin mm -hmm. for uh, Earth Observation data usage, so it's uh, really expanding this. Uh, uh, but, uh, I, I'm feeling like, you know, uh, if you're programming and programming, in, for example, like, uh, I don't know, a PhD, let's say, example, and you always look at the programmer who's programming in C or C++, like, oh, it's a really cool guy. And right now, I also feel a little bit that some of the students, that if they understand QGIS, it's uh, for, for what other students, ah, I understand QGIS. So how to call it? <laughs> yeah, and or or if he's is doing something in database, he feels that he's doing like something geeky, and uh, it's uh, not for all students. I understand that if I if few students uh, will teach open source JS properly, they from for me it's not okay. <laughs> it's not not necessary to teach all the students, and um, not necessary. I have to say I also don't want to say that uh, my intention for this uh, presentation was to say that open source uh, teaching open source is better than teaching uh, conventional software. It's just two ways, and we as teachers should uh, teach both of them. But I think this audience agrees that you're doing a wonderful job and you deserve a big round of applause. Yes, thank you. Thank you.